Hi, welcome to Sweet Dreams Wellness Travel. I am Barbara Tuckett, your host and the owner of Sweet Dreams Travel. I am a wellness travel specialist. I believe that our mind, body, and spirit all play into our well being, and I create travel experiences which improve your wellness so that you return from your vacation with more health, more happiness, and more connection, both with those you've traveled with and also with your destination. In these episodes, I explore travel and wellness experiences, giving you ideas and recommendations, and also interviewing people who have firsthand experience of the places where you may want to go next. Welcome, let's get started. Hey, I am so excited today because I have two amazing guests and we have a great topic for you. My two guests are my sister, Rachel, and my daughter, Raleigh. And the fun thing about today's episode is that we are going to be talking about a Disney cruise and asking ourselves, is it really worth all the hype? I know there's a lot of hype around Disney cruises. And so we are going to dive in today and get started. So hi, Rachel. Hi, Barbara. And hi, Raleigh. Hi, Mom. Okay, we are going to jump in and talk about their cruise. On a Disney cruise, there are a lot of things that are the same, and but there are some things that are different. And so we're going to kind of just oh, get in and talk about all the different things. One thing that I noticed from a travel agent perspective is that before the cruise ever started, all cruise lines always provide luggage tags for you to attach to your handles on your suitcases. And with the luggage tags, they are just so that the, the people on the cruise line as you're checking in so that they know where to take your suitcases. They know where to drop them off, what room you're in and all of that. One thing I noticed is different about a Disney cruise than other cruise lines. Most cruise lines just email them to you or they make them available online and you can print them out before you go. But one thing that Disney does that's different is they actually send you a packet in the mail to your address with your luggage tags and this little welcome packet thing. So I thought that was pretty fun. Just to give you a little background on Raleigh and Rachel, Raleigh has been on other cruise lines. And for Rachel, this was her first Disney cruise, the first cruise that she has ever sailed on. So Raleigh has no children and Rachel has four children. So they went on the same cruise. They went just a couple of weeks ago and um, they went together. And so they have two very unique perspectives. To open it up, did either of you notice anything in particular about before the cruise that was the same or different from another cruise in Raleigh's case or that you particularly liked or didn't like or any any comments on before the cruise left? Either one of you? I loved using the Disney app. They have an app that you download on your phone. And that's where you check in. You can upload all of your check-in documentation, your passport, everything. And you can do excursions, reserve excursions on the app. Um, So I thought before going on the cruise, the app was super helpful. And, you know, having never been on another cruise, I don't know if all cruise lines have those. But I thought the Disney app, it's called Navigator. Anyway, I thought it was very helpful before the cruise of knowing what to expect, even knowing what to pack. Um, I thought that was really helpful and useful. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's an amazing feature that they have. Raleigh, anything you noticed before the cruise or did it all seem pretty normal to other cruises? It was pretty normal. I actually went with another person we went with is my sister and it was actually her birthday on the cruise. And so we decided that we were going to do Disney does something cool for birthdays so you can purchase decorations. And I don't know if other cruise lines do that. But it was so fun to get on there and purchase the decorations. And the staff totally comes in and decorates the whole room, gives them a couple little souvenirs. Like, it was so cute to walk into the room and see it all decorated for her. So I I love that. I thought that was so fun. Regarding the tags, it is cool how they send them to you. Uh, but if you forget them, it's not a big deal. Like, it's not a problem because... There's somebody there that takes your bags and he's like, oh, fabulous. Like, no problem. I got a tag right here. Puts it on your suitcase, writes down your cabin number, and then you're good to go. So if you forget them, like, 
no problem. It's fabulous. <laughs> yes. And I do need to note that other cruise lines do the same thing with luggage tags. So not as far as sending them in the mail, but they do have extras there so that as you're checking in, they have blank ones. You can just write your room number on them. And so it's not a problem for check-in. Okay. So checking in, I didn't hear any negatives about checking in. Did that go okay for both of you guys? Rachel, yeah, I feel like, yeah, yeah. You, they told us beforehand, all of the documentation we had to have, we had to have like a headshot of all of us to upload a photo of us and then for my kids, we did not get passports for all of them. We just did birth certificates. So we had to upload a, a copy of their birth certificate. And then my husband and I, our passports, it was really useful. Like it was just fine. You do, the earlier you check in, like once the check-in window opens, the earlier you check in, the earlier check-in time you get on the day that you like board the boat. So that is useful but the bottom line is everyone gets to board the boat so it doesn't actually matter I don't know not a huge stress yeah so if you get on the app and check into the cruise early then you could choose an earlier boarding time but if you wait and do it you know a week before the cruise you're still going to get on the ship it might just be a little bit later (laughs) so yeah absolutely So let's talk about um, something more exciting than the pre-cruise stuff. Let's talk about what it's like on board. I'm sure a lot of people are wondering, like, are there really characters everywhere? Are there still lines for characters? How many are there? Like, is it similar to Disneyland or Disney World where they make certain appearances at certain times of day or are they out all the time? Also talk about, you know, some of the features on board or different things that you liked or noticed or things like that. So Um, how about Rachel, how about we start with you? Um, especially since you've got kids that were probably very interested in some of the characters. So maybe talk about what you noticed and then Raleigh, you can talk about what you noticed. Yes, there were so many characters way better than at Disney world or Disneyland. There were characters everywhere. I felt like, um, so there were some character meet and greets you could sign up for beforehand on the app. Um, So like they were like, as we had a Marvel day at sea. So on Marvel day at sea, there were certain characters, Marvel characters we could sign up to go and see. That was all before the cruise that we would sign up for them. So the Asgard ones, we saw Loki um, and later Thor and Jane were at the Asgard one, you know, so you could sign up and the lines for those weren't terribly long because it was just a, a select few people that had signed up for those meet and greets. Um, You know, then there was like a Guardian of the Galaxy one where Groot was. So those were fun. There was also a princess one. We didn't sign up to do the princess one. So I don't know what princesses were at the the princess one. So it was a shorter line. There was a specific time you signed up to go and you would see whatever characters were at that specific meet and greet. And you could take pictures with them and talk to them. So that was nice um, to have those specific meet and greets set up. But then... There was also characters I felt like on the ship all the time. There was at least, you know, two or three characters at any given time on like deck three and deck four, where it was kind of like the main area, the lobby area of the ship. There was always someone, uh, a few different people. It was not uncommon to like get off the elevator and have someone just randomly right there. Most of those I think were listed on the app as, you know, where they were. And so you could specifically go and get in those character lines but I know that not all of them were specifically listed it was you know just who was there and um the lines I didn't feel like were terribly long I feel like the longest lines were for Mickey and Minnie um in all honesty I think the princess lines maybe were got long I don't know like I said I didn't wait in any princess lines my I only have one daughter and she is 12 so she wasn't super anxious to meet the princesses but um I have younger sons and so anyway standing in line for Mickey or Minnie or like Goofy those were kind of some of the longer lines for us but even that wasn't it wasn't too long it was a lot shorter than what I have experienced at Disneyland so how about you Rolly um about characters but just anything else on board Right. Um, Yeah, it was way fun to see the characters. Like Rachel said, they were just some of them would just be walking around. Right. You just run into them, get some candid shots of them. So that was really fun. 
Um, and everything, like everything is Disney, right? So like they have Disney music playing throughout the entire ship and it's so fun to hear all the time. We were there for seven days. So it's so fun to hear all the Disney music the whole time. Everything like the towels have the Disney cruise line logo, the cups, like everything has that logo. The plates were fun, like everything. And so I feel like the whole atmosphere, they were just trying to make a good, happy experience full of like, Disney and I really think they succeeded and it was just so easy you know everybody was so kind the workers were so kind if you didn't know where something was it was so easy to be like hey where's this and they'd be like oh it's right over here so everyone was super helpful and kind like it was just all Disney it's great that's fun it kind of felt like it was kind of felt like being at Disneyland or Disney World but a little more low key because there's not rides to run around to jump on, but but also totally great atmosphere then. Is that what you mm -hmm. thought? Yeah. Well, and along with that, I felt like it was very family friendly. I, you know, traveling with four kids, a lot of times you feel like your kids are in the way or other people are bugged with your kids, but I never felt that way once on the cruise line. I mean, there's a lot of kids on the cruise line, but if my children would run ahead of people in the and get and jump on the elevator or hurry off the elevator. Or, I don't know, in lines or whatever. I never felt like anybody was bugged with having kids there or kids being kids. It was very family friendly, very, nothing was inappropriate for kids. It was just really fun to be in a place where I didn't have to worry about what my kids were going to be exposed to. So I could feel like sure kids run off and go and you wait in this line and I'll wait in this line or, or we're going to do different things. You be up on this deck and I'll be on a different deck. And it didn't feel like, Oh, is someone going to be frustrated with them or are they going to be in the way? Everyone was very helpful and it was, it was really great how family oriented and family friendly it was. That's awesome. Let's talk about dining for a minute. We'll start with Raleigh. Tell us, some of your highlights from the dining experience or maybe even things you've noticed that are different Disney versus other cruise lines that you've been on or even just in in particular just about the cruise and then Rachel if you want to add anything we can do that too um I thought the dining was super fun and I have only been on Royal Caribbean and Disney so I'm not like super expert but <laughs> um in Royal Caribbean you only have one big dining room that seats everybody and that obviously they have different times but it's just one big dining room um with this other Disney. than the specialty other than the specialty restaurants right. right and there's always specialty restaurants with disney there are three dining rooms which i thought was super fun they have like the royal palace the enchanted garden and like animators palette and you'd have the same wait staff every night, which was fun. They dress up in their um, different uniforms. They were different every night. So that was really fun to see all the different uniforms they had. Um, and it was, like Rachel said, very family friendly. The waiters and everybody was so fun and helpful and funny. And they would do fun puzzles and magic tricks and just super friendly and super accommodating. Um, and another. On Royal Caribbean, at least, they are super accommodating, but I just felt like this atmosphere for dining, at least, was a little bit lighter, more fun, because it is Disney and because they are trying to cater to families and to, to kids and trying to make it fun for them and not like, okay, now we have to sit down for dinner for a whole hour, hour and a half, however long it takes, right? So they make it fun, which I love. I love that. Yeah. Rachel, do you have anything to add? Um, I agree with what everything that Raleigh said. One thing that I also really loved was I have a child that just wanted to eat hamburgers every night. And there was one night that hamburgers weren't on the menu. Like for the most part, the kid's menu is the same every night, but on what, for whatever reason, hamburgers weren't on the menu that night. And the waiter was like, I'll get you a hamburger. It's fine. And I loved that. I loved how accommodating they were that it wasn't like, no, you have to pick something from the menu. This is, you know, these are your only options. But he was totally like, no, it's fine. I know you want a hamburger, so I'll get you a hamburger. Anyway, I loved how accommodating they were. And the dinner time was actually one of my highlights because it was so fun. Um, 
to be waited on. I mean, as a mom to not have to do any of that is feels very indulgent, but then the, they were so entertaining for the kids and making it fun. They brought out the kids food first, um, just to help the kids along. So they didn't have to wait as long. And, and it was, it was fun. The dining experience was, was great. That's awesome. That's awesome. Okay. Let's talk about like some just different places on board that you enjoy going or that you, you know, your kids or you enjoy doing. So Rachel, what are some, what were some of your family's favorite things on board? Um, the kids area was my, where my kid, that's where my kids wanted to hang out. Um, so the first day they let you do tours of the kids area. So I would recommend doing a tour. Someone had told me this before the cruise. Um, they have like just open houses. You can go and just walk through. And as a parent, that was great to see what options there were for my kids. But then I could also encourage them to do different things, right? I knew what was happening in, in different rooms. So I could say, hey, you should go and try out this you know, this dance floor, or you should go and try out these different things. But, um, my, so my 12 year old went to the tween club one time and she, um, she felt a little bit uncomfortable. So she didn't ever go back to the tween club, but then she was also able to go in with the, the younger kids and go to like the youth club. Um, I think it's ages four through 12 or something. So she's just on the high end of it. But then my three boys were all able to be there. So they had so much fun in the youth club. Um, beforehand, I could select whether my kids could check themselves out or if once they were checked in, if they just had to stay checked in until I came and checked them out, you know, my husband or I. And that was nice to know once we had checked them in that they were just going to be there. For my older daughter, it was nice that she could check herself out so she could come and find us or she could go and do other things that she wanted to do at a certain time. But then for my younger three, it was nice to say they're in the kids club. I know they're not coming out of the kids club. So I could have some peace of mind to go and do what I wanted to do. Um, But they, my boys chose to play on the Xbox a lot, which was fine. That was their choice. That's what they chose to do. I do wish I would have been a little bit more like, uh, encouraging them to try different things. But, um, some of our other friends that were also on the cruise, their kids came home or checked when they checked them out, they had like pillowcases that they had covered. They had shirts that they had all signed each other's shirts. They had all these crafts that they had done. Um, so I do think they, put a lot of effort into entertaining the kids. They did have some characters go to the kids area that the kids could meet them while they were checked in. They had all kinds of really fun activities and, and things going on in the kids area. So it was a place that my kids really wanted to be and had a really fun, fun time. That's awesome. And I think when we were talking earlier, um, you know, not on this, this particular call, but, um, didn't it, didn't you tell me that the hours for the kids club were really good? They had really good hours. They were, I feel like they were always open. I mean, I think one of our friends said that their kids shut it down every night at like midnight, I think is when it closed for the younger, for like the three to 12 kids club, the tween one and the teen one stayed up even later, stayed open even later than that. But, um, yeah, they, and they were open earlier in the day, all day long. I feel like I can't ever remember there being a time that my kids wanted to go or that I wanted them to go, that it wasn't open. It, it, I think was always (laughs) open. It's really, and the, the counselors there, that's what they called the staff there were really nice. They were really good with the kids. They wear these wristbands, And so they always knew exactly where my kids were when I'd go and pick them up. You know, I would just say my kid's name, you know, I'm here to check out whoever. And I'd give them my card. They would scan it, make sure that I was the, you know, who, who I said I was and things. And then because of these wristbands, they had like a a tracking chip in it and they knew right in the play area where my kids were. So I never felt like, oh, my kids are one of a hundred that are in here, it felt like they would say, oh, they're right here. I'll go grab them. And it was so fast to check them in and out. And I felt like they took really good care of my kids and my kids had a really great time. That's amazing. That sounds awesome. Okay. So now switching gears, Raleigh, um, 
tell us some of the stuff that you did on board, not having any kids, not having to worry about the kids club. So what did you do? Um, mostly, uh, I hung out in the adult section of the pool deck, <laughs> um, <laughs> which was super nice because it was 18 and older. And I, if I remember correctly, I'm Royal Caribbean at 16 and older. So it was really nice because like the people who were there knew like, this is to relax, to get some sunshine, to just kind of, you know, get away from kids, the outside world, whatever it may be, to just chill, not do anything, have a drink if you wanted to, just relax. And so that was really nice. So it was always really peaceful. They always had like calming music playing, which was nice. Um, they had tons of and even if you didn't want to be on the pool deck, like they have tons of activities going on all throughout the day, which is super fun, like different trivias and, you know, meeting the characters and even just like walking around, just super tons and tons and tons of activities. So that was always fun. So if you didn't want to be in the sun, if you're not a sun person, like you can stay inside all day and it's great because they have so, so many things to do. So I love that. That's so fun. Okay, anything else on board that comes to mind? Or should we go to the shore excursions? I was just going to put a little plug in yeah. for, so while we were on board, the new Ant-Man and Wasp Quantumania came out and they let us all watch it on board. Anyone that wanted to, they had like four different showings while we were on there, different times of the day in different theaters. Like the first showing was in the huge theater where they did shows and then the other showings were in the smaller theater, but it's still a big theater. Anyway, so that was a huge fun thing that Disney does. That if if they have a movie that's being released while you're on board, they let you watch it on board. And um, and so that was that was a fun thing that we got to see the movie as soon as it was released. And then I was also gonna say the shows each night were fantastic they were amazing the last night on board it was beauty and the beast and it was broadway quality it was incredible we went to the matinee showing of it actually and then one of my sons wanted to go to the evening showing again so he saw it twice because he loved it so much um Anyway, the shows were great. Every night they were they were really fun. They did Disney music in them, switching it up in different ways and different things. It was very family friendly. The kids did great. They had popcorn you right there you could buy and take into the show. But obviously, like for us, we had the earlier dinner time. So we had just eaten dinner. It wasn't like we were starving or anything. But the shows were so fun. The entertainment. So they would do like a, a show in the theater and then usually up on deck 11, which was like the, the main deck where the swimming pools are and stuff. They also usually had some like nightly entertainment of, of some sort. Um, and then for two different nights, they had some fireworks up there. Anyway, so it was really fun. And like Raleigh said, there was always a lot to do. We have some friends that went on an art tour that walked around the boat and people told them about the different art that was on the boat and you know some there's something for everybody that would be interesting to everybody if you don't want to just hang out and swim there was a lot of different options yeah yeah that's awesome anything something else? else yeah something else I want to add is I feel like on Royal Caribbean at least they would do they would do shows but they were more like comedy or just like entertainment on Disney they actually had like theatrical shows like plays and I I love that like I thought that was so fun to actually go and watch a play instead of like somebody doing a stand-up comedy or whatever it was you know somebody like entertaining us so I just loved the show aspect of it the theater aspect of it I thought that was super fun yeah that is that's awesome and I, I have anybody that I've talked to who has been on a Disney cruise, they rave about the entertainment. Like they, that is something I think that Disney does like amazingly well. Let's switch gears and let's talk about some of the things that you did off the ship. So you had two different stops. One was at, on the private island, Disney's private island called Castaway Key. And then the other one was the Cozumel stop that you had. So... What did you do on Castaway Key? 
Uh, me and my sister, we basically just relaxed. We walked around. It's a huge island and they have plenty of beaches that you can sit at. They have even an adult beach that you can go relax at. The food and the drinks are all included, which was super nice. They had ice cream stands everywhere. So that was super great to get soft serve whenever. They had bikes that you could rent, a myriad of different things. But mostly what I did was just relax on the beach and kind of get in the ocean a little bit. That was nice. Didn't really do a whole lot, but it was good. Okay. How about you guys, Rachel? We bought a package that included three different things. So we had bikes for an hour. Um, There's a biking trail there that you can bike around the island. And that was really fun to bike around the island. Um, And then part of the package as well was snorkeling gear. So we had snorkeling gear. And then we had tubes that you could like lay on or play on in the water or um, there's some water slides. I, I didn't ever go down any of the water slides personally, but um, so that was really fun. The snorkeling for my husband and one of my sons was their favorite thing. They spent hours snorkeling at the island. They have sunk um, like the statue of Eric from the Little Mermaid. Oh, so you can snorkel and go and see that. They have one of those old submarine boats from Disneyland, the yellow submarine boats that sunk in. You can go and find that. There's also, I think they said there's a character of like Daisy and Donald and Mickey and Minnie that is sunken that you can go and snorkel and go and see. And I th- there was a bunch of other stuff that they saw when they were snorkeling as well. So that was super fun to snorkel around and go and, and see that. There's water slides there. A couple of my kids loved doing the water slides and then just playing on the beach and laying in the sun that it was just so nice it was we were there on just a beautiful day the best weather um so it was really nice we we wanted to get a cabana the cabanas are hard to reserve because they don't have very many and they go so fast so we did not have a cabana reserved but um they have beach chairs everywhere and umbrellas and things so it wasn't it wasn't hard to find a place um for that and one of the members of our party also is in a wheelchair and they have a sand wheelchair that they transferred her into. And it was so easy to push her on the sand. So that was nice. And and that was also just included, not an extra charge or anything, but it was easy to transfer her into the sand wheelchair. And then we could push her, push her wherever we needed to go. And, and that was really, really nice. That's awesome. I don't know if anybody's ever tried to push a wheelchair or a bike or anything with wheels or pull something like that on the sand. It's like impossible. So that's pretty amazing. (laughs) Yes. Yes. (laughs) Um, Okay. So it sounds like Castaway Key was a hit. Um, I did want, Raleigh, I just want you to comment and tell us. So you have now been um, at Castaway Key, which is the Disney private island. And you've also been on Coco Cay, which is the Royal Caribbean private island. What do you think about, like, compare the two just for, just quickly, what do you think? Um, Me personally, I like Coco Cay better. (laughs) Um, It, I just feel like there's a lot more to do. They have a bunch of water slides. They have a wave pool. They have pools everywhere. They have beach if you want to go sit or comb the beach, you know, find cool stuff. Like, they just, I feel like they have a lot more to do on Coco Cay um, on Royal Caribbean's private, but Castaway Cay or Cay was great to just relax on and walk around and do nothing. Okay. That's just for comparison's sake. And then your other stop that you had was in Cozumel. Rachel, do you want to go first and talk about what you did in Cozumel? Yes. So uh, we had, again, booked this all on the Disney app and everything. We went and swam with dolphins. That's what our kids wanted to do. We gave them this gift for Christmas and asked them what they wanted to do on that day on Cozumel and talked about a lot of the different excursion options. They've heard about swimming with dolphins from friends and cousins. And so that was without question, the excursion of our choice. And it did not disappoint. It was so awesome. Um, I guess just something that I wasn't aware of, or I didn't know, they don't let you take your phones out there to like take pictures of the swimming with dolphins. 
which makes sense because all six of us were in the water swimming with dolphins. So I don't know what I would have done with a phone or how I would have actually handled that taking pictures. They just had a photographer out there and he took some amazing pictures. And at first we were like, we're not going to buy them. But as we were looking at them, they were really good. He got some great shots. So we ended up buying the package of the pictures and it just, it's really expensive because they know you have no pictures of this memory with your kids, with your family. And so they can charge a lot. So that was one thing I felt like the excursion was expensive, especially paying for six of us. And then I hadn't anticipated the extra that the pictures were going to be. I think it's worth it. And I don't, I don't regret for one minute, uh, buying the pictures, but that's just one thing to keep in mind if that's the excursion you choose. But it was, it was fun. They had food included in the excursion and the ride to the place and back to the port was all included as well. It was, it was really fun. They had a beach there as well that we could go and play on this beach. Um, and they had some cool things we could walk around and tour and see. And they had like a tequila tasting part that you could go if that was what you wanted to do that was all included in it. So it, it was really fun. It did not disappoint at all. And, um, was a really fun excursion to do with kids. I think the most disappointing part of it was the lunch buffet was, was, uh, a little underwhelming. It, they didn't have great options. Um, but it was fine. We ate and then we knew we'd go back on the ship and there would be yummy food back on the ship. So it wasn't that big of a deal, but that was not definitely the food at that place on our excursion was not a highlight <laughs> for sure. But, um, but the excursion as a whole was, was really fun um, to do the, the swimming with the dolphins. And we got to meet a manatee as well and uh, pet a manatee and learn a little bit about manatees. And so that was, that was a really fun excursion that we did in Cosmo. Awesome. Okay, Raleigh, let's switch gears. Talk about what you guys did in Cosmo. Okay. So me and my sister, we did ATVs and it was a lot of fun. Um, it was a lot of fun. Uh, it was very bumpy terrain, <laughs> um, but it, it must have rained recently because it wasn't super dusty. So that was really nice. Um, but super bumpy. In fact, the next day we were like, oh, my back hurts. Like it's super sore. Our arms hurt. But <laughs> We were riding for in a total in a total for an hour. Um, we had two breaks where they would stop and share some Mayan history and Mayan culture, so that was way cool to hear. Um, and then after the ATVs, we took a bus to um, a beach, had some lunch there, and got to hang out at the beach for a nice hour and a half. So that was that was really nice to be able to do that and just relax after uh, an hour driving ATVs and, you know, getting tossed around. Um, there are two types of ATVs. There's a single person or you can do it with somebody, which was super nice. So if you have, you know, kind of a younger kid or um, somebody that doesn't want to drive it, then they can go with you. So that was really nice too, to have that option. Um, lunch was included in ours too. And, and the food was good. I, I was hoping for, um, some Mexican food because we were in Cozumel. So I was hoping for some Mexican food, but I felt like it was more American. So that was my <laughs> complaint, but it was, it was good. And it was nice to be at the beach, there wasn't waves crashing. So you could actually get in the ocean and be in there for a long time. She didn't feel like the current would drag you out. So that was really nice. But overall, it was it was a good experience. It was fun transportation there and back, which was nice, all included. I also loved how when you are getting off the boat to get to your excursion, they have you meet in a place on the ship with other at least with Royal Caribbean, you have to meet off the ship to whatever meeting place you're at. With Disney, you meet on the ship and then, you know, you have like a little sticker. I had the goofy sticker 
So the goofy group was, um, you met at whatever, nine o'clock and then in the Royal theater. And then once you were all there, then the group, your guide took you all the way out to where the excursion was happening. So I really liked how you met in the ship first and then went. I felt like that was a little more less um, chaotic than trying to get to the excursion site yourself. So I liked that. That's awesome. And Rachel, did your group meet inside also? Yeah. And that was super, super great. Then we all, like all the people that were doing it, we all rode over and back together. Um, one thing I also really loved is they gave us towels. They gave us towels to take with us. Um, so on Castaway Key, they gave us towels when we got off the boat as we got onto the island. But then um, before on Cozumel Day, before we got off the boat, they gave us towels to take with us. And that was nice that we didn't have to pack towels because they just gave us towels. Yeah, that's great that they thought of that. You guys too, Raleigh. They gave you guys towels for your excursions as well. Yep. Good. Okay. Well, um, I think we've kind of covered almost everything. Is there anything else that you've thought of while we've been talking that you wanted to add about anything about the ship or the cruise or anything? No, nope. I can't think of anything. It was so fun. Okay. Raleigh, anything you want to add? Um, I don't think so. I felt like there was a lot of places to eat. Like if you didn't want to be in the dining room, you could go up to, it's called Cabanas, which is like the buffet. You could go there. They had like Flo's Cafe, right? From cars that they had a lot of different stuff. Um, I just felt like there was always plenty to eat. So if you didn't, you know, have dining reservations or whatever, you could go other places, which was nice. So I felt like there was never any shortage of food. That's great. Um, the one thing, even though I was not on this cruise with you guys, the one thing, and Raleigh, you kind of alluded to this a little bit earlier, but um, that I thought they did a great job with, it sounded like and looked like, was birthday celebration. Um, anybody who had a birthday celebration that they, you know, of course, celebrated that, which all ships, all ships do celebrate that. But um, with this, with Disney, and possibly it was because we, you know, we totally did ahead of time, we did book pre book the, the birthday celebration for Sabra, my younger daughter, because um, her birthday was right in the middle of the week. And but I just thought it was super fun to see the pictures of the whole crew, the, this whole dining crew, um, you know, walking around singing happy birthday to her. And then she got this whole big Mickey cake um, at dinner. And it just was a fun um, other than like Riley talked about the the decorations, like the room decorations and stuff. And so I just think that is I just think that is like definitely something to um note about you know disney cruises but they're just kind of kind of really great that way so all right so back to our question that we were kind of going for at the beginning disney cruises always have a big hype around them and as we know they always have a heftier price tag than other cruise lines and other cruises and so in your opinion um, both of you two who have just recently gotten back from a Disney cruise, is it worth all the hype? Um, what do you think, Rachel? Is it worth all the hype? Would you do a Disney cruise again? And what's your thought? Yes, absolutely. I thought it was, was totally worth it. it worth the money, worth the everything to, to be able to do that and have a place where it felt safe for my kids. It felt fun for my kids. It, was very family oriented. Um, it was exactly what we were looking for, for our first cruise and for going as a family. I thought it was a hundred percent worth the money and all of the hype that I have heard over the years. Um, I thought it was, was totally worth it. Okay. And then Raleigh. So going without children, obviously if you've got a family with a lot of kids or any kids, um, you know, a Disney cruise is going to have a, a huge appeal, a certain appeal for you. But then going as an adult without any children um, 
and having cruised on other cruise lines before, what do you think? Is a Disney cruise worth the hype? Um, I loved it. I think it really depends on what you're looking for, though. I am a huge Disney nerd, so anything Disney, I'm all about, and I will do 100% of the time. I love Disney. I will spend the money for Disney. That's me. Um, I love Royal Caribbean, though. Royal Caribbean is great. I have nothing against Royal Caribbean, so I think it really depends on what you're looking for. If you're not looking for, like... To be around a lot of little kids, a lot of families, Disney Cruise is not for you. I'm like, it's not because there are kids everywhere. And for me, like, that's fun. I think it's fun to see how excited the kids are and their facial expressions. Like, I love that. But if you're not a big kid person and you're just going with your significant other, Disney Cruise may not be for you. Um, But that's not to, but I loved it. I Totally thought it was worth it for what I was going for. Totally thought it was worth it. I loved the atmosphere. I loved seeing all the kids and seeing how happy they were to see the characters. I loved seeing the characters. I loved it for what I was going for. I thought the price was worth it. Like Rachel said, like it totally was so great. It was so great for what I was expecting, for sure. It even exceeded expectations. So I loved it. It depends on what you're going for. I would not go on there for a honeymoon. No, I wouldn't do that. But depends on what you want. Right. But for, a you know, another Disney lover that wants to experience that, maybe they would go for a honeymoon. Who knows? Anyway. Right. <laughs> anyway, thank you. Thank you so much for talking to me about your Disney cruise and for getting us all excited about what Disney is and being able to offer these Disney cruises. So sounds like it was a two thumbs up for both of you and you would both do a Disney cruise again if you had the opportunity. And so that's awesome. And thanks for joining me, you guys. I appreciate it. And we'll talk to you later. Bye. 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 Thanks for joining me today. If you've enjoyed this episode, please like, share, subscribe, or leave a review. If you'd like to contact me about a vacation, the best way is to visit my website, sweetdreamstravel.net. To connect on social media, you can find me on Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, or LinkedIn. See you next time.